Welcome back to Cardinalities.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what is public philosophy. Now, the simple answer is this is public philosophy. What you're watching right now is public philosophy. This is a YouTube channel that teaches the public about philosophy and that attempts to make philosophical concepts more accessible to a wider audience. In general, the definition of public philosophy is philosophy that's done outside of the ivory tower, outside of academia. Philosophies whose expected audience is more than others that happen to have a doctoral degree in a particularly isolated corner of philosophy. Philosophy that is geared towards the general public. Public philosophy includes everything from Socrates going up to strangers and challenging their beliefs on the street, to pop philosophy books that seek to teach a range of people about philosophy and the tools of philosophy. Public philosophy is both the act of educating the public, i.e. people that are not formally trained in philosophy, about philosophy, as well as engaging with the public in debate to hone the skills of reasoning and argumentation. Diogenes Laertius's horrible poetry the popularity of which saved many philosophical positions from antiquity is public philosophy because it was geared at making these positions of ancient philosophers more accessible to the public of the time. And the popularity of that is actually what ended up saving many of those positions, as are Voltaire's extensive writings that brought many philosophical ideas to the masses. I could list many more philosophers from Bertrand Russell to many others that made philosophy more engaging to the public. But to give you a broad sense, public philosophy is about making philosophy accessible to a wide audience. Now, some philosophers have opposed public philosophy, arguing that philosophy requires a certain level of special training to understand, and that without such training, philosophy risks being diluted or diminished by people that don't really understand how to do reasoning, how to make rational arguments, and are just making arguments that aren't valid or aren't supported in some way. Hegel is sometimes interpreted as offering such a critique that not everyone can do philosophy, though one might say that perhaps Hegel offered such a critique because not many people could understand the writings of Hegel, and so he argued that therefore no one people need special training to understand philosophy because people need special training to understand Hegel. Though Others do interpret him as simply arguing that philosophy is not something that everyone is capable of doing without a certain level of training, that everyone has access to it, but it requires a certain level of training. Now, the case for public philosophy, on the other hand, is quite strong. Everyone seems to make ethical decisions on a daily basis. Should you eat meat? Should you buy organic? Should you go for a jog or spend more time with your son? Should you repost something that is harsh but accurate? In a democracy, it seems we need a citizenry that can do philosophy because they're forced to make important moral choices at the ballot box. There, we need people who can answer the questions of what is right and wrong, what is true or justified for themselves, who can understand and interpret arguments about justice and knowledge when they're presented to them. The simple case for public philosophy is that everyone must make philosophical choices every day when they do something as simple as going to the grocery store deciding what they're going to eat let alone when they're making complex decisions about who they're going to vote for. Why should we restrict understanding of those concepts and those choices to the elite alone? Why should the skills to make the moral choices be locked away in an ivory tower, accessible to only those who are able to pay exorbitant sums to get a philosophy degree? Philosophy is not merely essential for life. It is a right to all to have the tools to examine their lives. Some philosophers have even made the case that public philosophy should drive academic philosophy, not the other way around. Long delays between when an article is written and when it's accepted for publication mean that academic philosophers are often disincentivized from writing about current events or doing philosophy that would actually have a use to members of the public who are facing real ethical dilemmas every day and points them more towards writing yet another commentary on some philosopher from antiquity. Not that those aren't important, simply that pressure philosophers towards writing those diminishes the impact of philosophy on people's everyday lives. Instead, these philosophers argue for philosophy to be driven by the needs of the people, not blind desire to publish a relevant commentary on outdated ideas that cannot be connected to real life from a need to publish or perish. 
This is not to say that academic philosophy should not continue to pursue knowledge and continue to offer those commentaries, but rather that public philosophy should be given primacy, that we should focus more resources on research that's being done in a public philosophy sphere as opposed to research that's being done on philosophy that doesn't have an impact on people's lives, that more resources should be focused on maybe making philosophy more applicable to people's lives, or perhaps simply translating the philosophy that's already been done into terms that are accessible to the public. It's not necessarily about not doing another commentary on Plato. It's about making whatever ideas are presented in that commentary more accessible to the public so that they can understand why it's important and why they should care and how it can help them make ethical decisions in their lives as well as an effort made to teach the public the skills of reasoning and rationality that are so crucial and central to philosophy. Now, I made this channel to support and drive these two goals of public philosophy, both to provide a space where people can access ideas in philosophy, even if they don't have formal training in philosophy, even if they don't have a background or a philosophy degree, and do it for free. But also, as a skeptic, be able to push against people's ideas and challenge their ideas so they can hone their own reasoning skills to better be able to do philosophy and do the project of reasoning themselves. To, in other words, repave the agora with the rubble of the ivory tower. Choices about what is right and wrong cannot belong only to those rich and powerful enough to get a philosophy degree. Philosophy seems to be everyone's right. As a skeptic, it's my job to challenge everyone's beliefs and spur them to better reasoning and improve rationality. I want to give you the information and skills to do philosophy without needing to depend on an overpriced university. And I want to do it for free. But that said, I don't have an endowment to fund my research, or thousands of students paying $50,000 a year to support my work. I rely on ad revenue and the support of patrons to continue making videos. If you care about public philosophy and values the videos I make, I would really encourage you to consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Those funds go to me buying more encyclopedias, reference books, other materials for making videos to sure that, ensure that these videos are the highest quality that they can be, and that I'm able to continue providing you with weekly videos about new ideas and topics in philosophy. For those that have been with us for a while, the Patreon page has very recently been completely refreshed with new perks and a much more streamlined tier system. For just $2 a month, you can support the work we do on this channel and gain access to exclusive posts for patrons, information, including information on a big secret project that I've been working on for years and should be complete in the next few months. I'm not going to talk about it here publicly on the channel until it's out, but if you want to know what that is or have an idea of what that is, check out the Patreon page and consider becoming a $2 donor. We're going to be posting teasers and new tidbits to Patreon every week to give the patrons an early preview of this project, but also of many of the other videos and other projects that are to come. So consider supporting us on Patreon, please. Just $2 a month can make a huge difference in promoting public philosophy around the world and making sure philosophy is accessible to more than just the elite. If my videos have ever inspired you to think differently, have helped you write a paper or pass a test, or have taught you a new idea, consider supporting our work. Think of it as buying me a cup of coffee once a month. We have nearly 1,000 videos, far more content than you would ever get from a philosophy degree that would cost you over $200,000. By contributing, you support more people to gain an understanding of philosophy because you support me to make videos that are accessible to all, and you help our mission of making philosophy accessible to all. Before we go, I want to give a shout out to a couple of patrons over the next few months, we're going to be giving shout-outs to those patrons who have been supporting the channel for over a year. First up, a huge thank you to Joshua Furman, who's been a patron since April 14th, 2020. Thank you, Joshua, for supporting Public Philosophy and Carnades.org. We're going to be giving a big shout-out at the end of all these videos uh, for the next couple of months to patrons that have stuck with us. If you want to possibly see your name at the end of a shout-out uh, at the end of another video, consider as well uh, supporting us on Patreon. What do you think? Is public philosophy something that matters for society? Or 
is philosophy something that should be relegated to the ivory tower and accessible only to academics that have the proper training? Would you be willing to donate to support our work on this channel, promoting free public philosophy? If so, follow the link to our Patreon page and please consider supporting our work. Thank you so much for everyone that watches these videos, that shares these videos, that subscribes to the channel, even if you're not able to support us on Patreon. The fact that you're there watching and subscribing and learning philosophy. The goal of this channel isn't to be a, a self-propagating machine for, for making money. The goal is to promote philosophy and to make it more accessible to everyone. So if you're learning something about philosophy, if you're getting something positive from it, you're, you're helping us achieve our goal. If you're able to provide us with financial support, all the better. But if you're, if you're learning something, if you're engaging in debates in the comments, that's, that's my, my hope and my goal for the channel. And I'm so happy to have all of the subscribers that we do and all the viewers that we do um, do that. So consider supporting us on Patreon. Consider subscribing. Um, thanks for watching. And as always, stay skeptical, everybody.